Some bonds give more returns, get more security and more interest on your fixed deposits from Sri Lanka's largest finance company, LOLC Finance. The key to quality and efficiency. Be a jewel. Professionalism is the jewel in the corporate crown. Refresh Sri Lanka for a civic-minded society. In association with 99X. LMD. The voice of business. Hello and welcome to LMD TV. Tonight on the forum, we're talking about trends in consumer behaviors. And with us, we have the managing director of Hema's Consumer Brands, Sabrina Isafali. Hi, Sabrina. It's very nice to have you on the show. You're most welcome. To start off our discussion, we're seeing substantial shifts in the way that Sri Lankan consumers are behaving in the market, of course, owing to the economic crisis and all the challenges that have befallen them. So in your assessment, what are the most significant trends that you observe uh, when it comes to purchasing patterns in Sri Lankan consumer behavior? A great question. So, so, you know, you're absolutely right in that consumers are becoming much more price conscious. Um, so they're either sort of buying smaller packs or dropping out of discretion, discretionary categories altogether. Um, and I think, you know, they're, they're also open to switch brands uh, in their quest for better value, right? Um, however, there's one thing that I have noticed sort of uh, over the last 12 months, and that is that consumers are not willing to trade out of good quality products just for the sake of a price point. Um, uh, they know that that this has sort of deeper costs down the road, right? So, so for instance, uh, consumers may be a little reluctant to buy poor quality detergent if they feel that it damages their clothes because the replacement sort of cost of that is much more. Uh, similarly, you know, people are, are very reluctant to switch, you know, out of a good quality toothpaste because they know that sort of dental care down the road, you know, much more expensive. Um, so that's sort of one of the really interesting sort of shifts that we've seen that while yes, consumers are quite price conscious, they also know that sort of compromising quality can have um, you know, deeper sort of ramifications down the road. Uh, so that's on consumer behavior. Uh, in terms of shopping behavior, um, largely because of sort of the liquidity uh, crunch, uh, consumers don't have sort of cash in hand to do their sort of big monthly shop. Uh, so what we see is that they, you know, the, the, the concept of top-up shopping um, uh, has become quite common. So, uh, you know, they would buy whatever they can with, with the money in hand and then maybe top up towards the end of the month, um, uh, depending on, um, um, you know, what, what their needs were at that, at that point. You mentioned that consumers don't compromise on quality when it comes to certain categories. So which categories are they being thrifty on given the economic challenges? So, so I think, you know, the concept of so that there's a there's a base quality need that consumers are willing not willing to trade out of. Right. So, um, you know, is this poor quality and will it damage my uh, clothes or will it damage my teeth? Uh, but at the same sort of standard of quality, um, uh, you're right in, in that consumers do have a different standard of care. Right. Uh, so, for example, um, in categories like, you know, laundry, uh, for example, uh, consumers at the same sort of standard of quality, consumers may be willing to switch in and out of. Uh, brands, right? So a cheaper brand at an equivalent quality, consumers may be open to, um, to consider it. However, there, there are some categories, for example, like baby care. 
um, where consumers are absolutely not willing to make any compromises on what they use uh, for their baby. Um, and, and we see sort of similar trends in toothpaste where they, you know, there's a high degree of trust associated with something that you put in your mouth. So even if it means paying a little bit more, consumers are open to do that because they're very reluctant to switch out of a brand that they have sort of trusted uh, uh, over the years. So so within uh, within the categories, there's sort of a difference in, in the standard of care that consumers would place uh, when making those choices. And certainly in some of the personal care categories uh, like baby care and, and oral care uh, consume and, and also sanitary napkins, consumers are very reluctant to switch out of the brands that they have trusted. And Sabrina, looking at the other side of the story, how are brands and, and companies uh, really coping up with all these changing dynamics in consumers? Yes, yeah, so I think I think, you know, it, it was a very difficult decision for us too, uh, as an industry, as we saw the inflation, we knew that sort of we had no choice but to increase prices in order to survive. Um, it was a difficult decision. And I think we all took it very, very cautiously. Uh, but I think the great thing is, you know, because we were, we, we took that decision and were sort of able to survive, I think we could also then reinvest back into our brands. Um, uh, I know at Hamas, we we ensured that while we were driving price increases, we also invested back into our brands to drive sort of so, or, or to give consumers better value. Right. So so we didn't just give it back in sort of tactical promotions, but, but we also focused on really strength the performance of our products and strengthening our value propositions. For example, we, we sort of enhanced cavity protection in our brand, brand Clogard. Uh, we really enhanced the safety sort of credentials of our, um, our flagship brand, brand Baby Jeremy. Uh, and we really also drove to increase the efficacy of our washing powder. So, so it wasn't just about the price increase. Uh, we also you know, had a deep commitment to sort of give it back in, in really making sure that consumers were feeling that our brands were valued for money. Um, the other thing that sort of we did is we, we also innovated to ensure that we solved for the bottom of the pyramid that was really struggling to afford, you know, basic essentials, right? So um, we launched a value engineered laundry powder um, last year. We launched a value engineered sanitary napkin and a value engineered sort of soap at, at a significant discount um, uh, to the mass uh, segment. Uh, because, you know, fundamentally, we believe that consumers deserve good quality products at a more uh, affordable price point. And this, you know, was a really interesting exercise, I think, for the for the whole company and, and for the brands as well, uh, because we really got to sit with consumers in a sort of changing context and and really ask them, okay, in, in this time, what do you value? What don't you value? And, and we were able to really customize these value engineered products around, you know, what consumers valued um, um, uh, at that time. So in Sri Lanka, we have the multinationals, we have the large local players, and of course, smaller players and, and even white labels. Uh, what are the coping strategies like across these different types of companies? Yeah, so I mean, we're, we're a local company, right? So we're here to stay. Um, and we build sort of brands for uh, generations. Uh, and we know that, you know, that bad times pass and good times will come. And, and what we don't, you know, ever do is we don't compromise um, uh, sort of the quality or the promise that we make uh, with our brand. So that is that really drives us. Um, and I think that um, that has, you know, hopefully that will pay off because it, it really pushed us to figure out how we were going to make our brands more relevant in a time where sort of cash was limited. So as I said, that really drove us to, to customize sort of products under these brands uh, that gave more value, that were able to be value engineered to really meet a need. Uh, but secondly, and much more importantly, um, you know, ensuring that that sort of that sacred trust that we have built with, between our brands and our um, sort of consumers over the years, we, we made sure that we didn't compromise that um, because I think you know at a time when when a when a brand is increasing prices, there's a chance that consumers can feel disconnected from the brand. So uh, because we are a local company, I think for us we also play a lot of emphasis and a lot of investment uh, in rebuilding sort of this relationship between consumer a community uh, and brand and so uh, you know over the last year we actually gave back a lot um, in our social impact work through our brands um, I'll just give you a few examples um, with, with Diva which, which is our laundry uh, brand we we were able to sort of partner with women in management to train 250 female entrepreneurs um, uh, to really supplement their income because uh, women were 
were realizing that a single sort of income household was no longer tenable. Um, so we used the brand to really solve for that social issue. Uh, similarly, um, uh, we did um, parental clinics across the whole sort of country through uh, through Baby Sheremy uh, because we realized that the state uh, was cutting back from a lot of the education programs, uh, a lot of the um, nutrition packs that they gave pregnant mothers. And so we did, we, we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, at this time um, uh, in their lives, that pregnant mothers or, or, or mothers of newborn children weren't left uh, hanging. So um, so the brand really, uh, really sort of dialed up our parental clinics across the island, and we were able to um, uh, connect with I think over 12,000 beneficiaries, both in terms of education and in terms of sort of helping them, um, you know, get the nutrition they deserved at that sort of critical time. Um, so, so two things uh, just to summarize. One is we we made sure that our brands went that extra mile and customized uh, value engineered offerings for, for our consumers. And secondly, we deepened the relationship between consumer and brand to really help uh, our brands emerge stronger over a longer period of time and hopefully to impact positively in some of the inequalities, social inequalities that we see as a result of this crisis. Sabrina, you spoke of uh, maintaining relationships, which brings me to my next question. So according to Euromonitor's global consumer trends for this year, they said that there's going to be a lot of responsible but emotional spending. Uh, what are your thoughts on this uh, when we look at Sri Lanka? Sure. Um, yeah, and I think that uh, you know the, the word responsible is interesting. I think it, you know if you if you take twenty twenty three, we are we are not alone. Um, you know in 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 the economic crisis, I think a lot of South Asian markets are going through something similar. May may not be sort of as grave as ours, but a lot of countries are going into recession, right? So so consumers are really going to rally around products that they feel are essential. Um, some discretionary categories are going to see you know more consumption drops than others uh, and consumers are really going to reevaluate their buying behavior so i think that is that is probably going to be felt at different sort of degrees around the world um but but there there there's something you know in terms of responsible purchasing, which is that consumers sort of want to buy into brands that they perceive are ethical, buy into brands that they feel are making an impact, and buy into brands that are uh, environmentally sustainable. Um, while we don't really see that play out um, uh, in terms of a willingness to pay uh, for those sort of um, um, for for those sort of tenants in a brand in Sri Lanka, we definitely see this playing out um, uh, around the world, where, where consumers are actively selecting and deselecting brands based on the impact that they make uh, both positively uh, and negatively. Uh, I think, you know, this is a is a mega trend, so it's not going to go away. Um, and I think that um, uh, companies like ours are working really hard to ensure that we change our business model uh, to complement what we feel is a really um, uh, important trend to support. So, so when Sri Lankan consumers are willing to pay, uh, we'll be sort of ahead of the curve. Um, uh, but but sort of the, you you touched on a really interesting point, which is sort of emotional spending, right? Um, and there is a phenomenon called the lipstick effect, which I find really interesting, right? Which is sort of which says that you know, even in the middle of the worst of times, even in the middle of sort of deep recessions, uh, consumers sort of buy into quote unquote little luxuries, right? Um, and I think this really comes from the fact that you know, in, in sort of periods of economic recession, you, you put off so much, you trade out of so much, you trade out of travel, you trade out of um, sort of eating out. And, and there's so many things you're sort of giving up, right? So if there is a few sort of affordable little luxuries that, you know, give you that instant pick me up or make you feel good, um, uh, consumers are really willing to pay for that. And we we saw that actually in our business where, you know, our beauty and well-being portfolio actually grew in volume and value terms even during um, uh, the crisis. So, um, I mean, that's, that's a really interesting phenomenon um, to unpack, uh, particularly in times of recession, uh, we, yeah. which sort of means that consumers aren't willing to trade out of joy. <laughs> it's time to take a short break, but we'll soon come back to talk more about consumer behavior. Display your brand message on digital screens at Prime Locations. At the largest digital advertising network in Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka. Emerging Media. 
You're mobile, and so are we. Gets me going. Grab the Light 87 app at the Apple App Store or Google Play now. 87.8 and 87.6 Island Wide. Light 87. Welcome back to the show. We're talking to the managing director of Hamas Consumer Goods, Sabrina Isfali. So against all these changing dynamics, what happens to loyalty, especially when consumers are trying really hard to cope up with the ever-increasing costs of all expenses? Yeah. No, so I think, I think you know, definitely people are reevaluating their relationship with brands, right? So um, people are willing to switch um, from brands that they've maybe, you know, used for years and years and years. Uh, if they feel that another brand is offering them a better sort of value for money proposition, right? So so, so in a way, brands have to work much harder to retain their consumer base. Um, uh, but that being said, if they, you know, if, say, for example, if they try a product and it, it, they don't like it or, or if it causes sort of an irritation, um, uh, they, they will immediately switch back. So I think really rather than talking about sort of the power of brands in a recession, because a recession is, a, is often a really scary time where consumers reevaluate everything they know, uh, I think, you know, quality matters uh, beyond brand. Um, so if they if they feel that you know there is a product out there that's giving them good quality, good value for money, they try it, they like it. Uh, there's a better chance that sort of consumers will stay with that uh, uh, particular product, right? Um, um, so I think you know resting on the laurels of a brand alone may not necessarily serve companies well uh, in this time. Uh, I think you actively have to sort of um, not just communicate your quality, but you also have to deliver it. Sabrina, we're seeing a lot of new customer segments emerge, uh, for example, Gen Z. Uh, in this light, are the SEC profiles um, still valid uh, in Sri Lanka in terms of our customers? And what are the distinct customer segments that you are seeing? Sure. Uh, so, so I think, you know, for me uh, and, and for, for our business, we prefer to understand consumers by their needs, right? So, so I think an SEC classification is good to understand demographics. Um, it's good sort of if you're working with data and if you want to understand sort of whether Sri Lankans are becoming richer or poorer, uh, but it's not really helpful when understanding human behavior, right? Uh, and as I said, as a local company, our, our duty really is to customize for emerging needs, right? So, so we essentially design our products from scratch to meet needs which we feel are more prevalent than others. So, so uh, we 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 like to sort of look at needs as opposed to sort of very formal SEC classifications. Um, um, so, uh, you know, I'll give you an example, right? So, for in instance, in a face care market, uh, we wouldn't necessarily look at it in terms of, um, you know, which SEC buys face care and which SEC doesn't. Um, we like to understand it in terms of, you know, what is the cluster of needs that consumers want to buy into in that market? For example, some consumers may want uh, even torn skin, some consumers may want sort of fair skin, some consumers may want people free skin. Uh, some uh, consumers, particularly um, uh, aging consumers, may have hyperpigmentation issues that they want to solve. So we like to see and size the market through those lenses and then see sort of where we really want to focus our innovation and our customization. Um, so, you know, th that's sort of the aside on how I think about um, think about the market and uh, how you think about consumer needs. Uh, but there are some emerging needs that would that are definitely um, uh, emerge uh, sort of new on the scene, right? So, so I, and I think this is largely on the back of a growing base of millennial and Gen Z consumers. Um, consumers are, are looking to buy into brands that make an impact, I think, particularly in the Gen Z segment. Um, consumers are looking for brands that are sustainable in their value chain. So this is not just brands that greenwash, but brands that sort of go that extra mile to make sure that their value chain uh, is sustainable. Um, and uh, I think with Gen Z consumers, because of sort of social me media creating such fragmented needs and preferences, they are really looking for brands that are personalized or, or, or product offer offerings that have been uh, personalized for them. They, they typically reject a one size fits all um, uh, brand and product approach. Um, so I think, you know, this is really changing how um, how we design products, uh, how we sort of look at performance in a product uh, and also where we, you know, where, where we choose to communicate this product. 
Moving on to a different area, uh, we're seeing that the role of digitalization in B2C purchasing is increasing globally. We have things mushrooming like uh, TikTok shop and even drone deliveries. Uh, but when we look at Sri Lanka, what is the digital drive looking like uh, when we look at our consumers and how they behave? Yeah, so so certainly we we, we haven't got uh, to the point of uh, drone deliveries, right? Um, but I mean that's not to dismiss the reality, which which I think um, is a question of when uh, and not if uh, e-commerce taking off uh, today. E-commerce is still a very small percentage of total retail uh, because you know Sri Lanka still is in the process of setting up sort of payment gateways and logistics infrastructure to really facilitate this. But there will be a time where e-commerce sort of plays are able to offer consumers more value um, or, or a better price point than traditional retail. And at that point, I think you will see e-commerce at an, at an inflection point. Um, but, but, you know, today we're not there yet. However, uh, I think what has dramatically shifted is, you know, the extent to which consumers are digitally influenced, largely on the back of social media, right? And you see consumers, uh, particularly younger consumers, they're, they're sort of believing branded ads less, right? So, um, so TV is great for awareness, uh, but it doesn't necessarily influence um, the, the sort of Gen Z viewer to try a brand, right? Uh, they would often go to social media to understand, you know, what are real consumers saying about this product? You know, are there any testimonials out there? Uh, they really want to see, quote unquote, real content. Uh, they want to see, quote unquote, real people using, uh, using products uh, and giving them a view on whether that product is suitable for them uh, or not. So, so I think, you know, uh, uh, as, a, as a company of branded goods, uh, this is a reality we, we definitely need to embrace. Uh, and I think, you know, that has changed how we um, uh, look at media and, and the roles that sort of different sort of media spaces have to play uh, in order to sort of augment um, uh, our brands. And, and particularly for some of our brands that are uh, that are sort of more suited for Gen Z, we see TV more as, a, as an awareness sort of media um, vehicle, uh, but we use sort of digital much more effectively, much more targeted um, uh, to really drive conversion. And that is more often than not uh, through people that actually use our products that sort of give positive testimonials. So my next question to you revolves around Refresh Sri Lanka, which is a campaign that we launched to create a more civic-minded society in Sri Lanka. So when we're looking at uh, brands and companies, really looking at supporting customers through this crisis while driving our uh, economic recovery, of course, how should Sri Lankan companies, uh, especially FMCG companies, really ensure that civic-mindedness is not ignored? Great question. So, so I think you know, economic recovery, whichever way we cut it, is going to be painful. Um, but I think we all have a part to play in getting Sri Lanka back uh, onto the path uh, of development. Um, and I think this is really, it's really important that we we commit to do things differently from the past if we're really going to make this a sustainable turnaround. Um, um, for instance, uh, slashing taxes and handing out more government subsidies and increasing public sector spending. Uh, we know from our past experience has hurt us. Um, so I think as a public, we need to ensure that we demand more sustainable policies uh, and we demand better institutions so that we don't get into this sort of constant trap of boom and bust. Um, I, I think, you know, as a private sector, we need to, you know, one thing we can do differently is that we can commit to speak out nationally uh, on issues that matter. Um, and I think this will help uh, not only the public, public being more educated about the process of economic recovery. It's not going to sort of happen overnight. And, and we need to, you know, get the public ready for that. Uh, we need to, you know, as a private sector, hold government accountable for the promises they make. Um, and we need to sort of push institutions um, 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 to sort of reform themselves and give them the freedom and the space to operate freely and fairly. So, so that's, I think, what we can do uh, as a private sector. As a sort of brand building company, um, you know, what, what we can do 
um, uh, at a at a time like this, where you know it's inevitable that the gap between sort of rich and poor is going to widen, uh, I think we can really position our brands to advocate um, and actively actively sort of uh, intervene to reduce emerging sort of social inequality. Um, so, for example, we we've sort of taken on um, um, period poverty as an issue through our brand Fems, uh, where we actively go into schools, speak to um, speak to women and and girls and tell them the importance of not trading out of this category and also creating products um, that are more accessible to, to women that, that may not be able to afford it, right? Um, uh, similarly, we need to sort of encourage more women to, to enter the workforce, right? 37% of our um, uh, only 37% of women uh, today are in the workforce. And I think, you know, a big part of economic recovery is getting more women to work. So I think, you know, some of our brands are, um, uh, trying to encourage female entrepreneurship. Um, you know, some of our sales force uh, are sort of actively looking to hire women and use women to community sell. So I think wherever we can, we need to pick sort of those burning issues um, that I think has the chance to sort of widen social inequalities and then intervene to close that gap as much as possible. And I think if everyone does their bit, um, uh, the path to recovery will be faster than it would be otherwise. We've been talking to the Managing Director of Hamas Consumer Goods, Sabrina Isufali. It's been very nice having you on the show, Sabrina. You're most welcome. This was... And to all our viewers, thank you so much for joining us. Until next time, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching and stay safe.